guys, hello, this is Hiraj with Yamaha. Um, I am on Synthplex 2019 for the first time, and this is Pitbull's first, Pitbull Audio that is, first look at the new CP stage pianos. Uh, you heard me play at the intro some piano, but there's a lot more, so let's talk about this and dive deep into um, some of the amazing features of the CP series. So first, it comes in two versions. There's a CP88, 88 keys, and there's a CP7373 keys weighted action. Um, this, the 88 keys uh, features a triple sensor, meaning you can restrike the note without releasing, releasing the key all the way up. So for example, the piano, I can replay the note again and again without lifting the key all the way up. And that's gonna be one of the main differences between the two actions. So let's dive deep into uh, the CP. So let's go from the left to right and explain what things do. Uh, you have your pitch bend and modulation all the way on the left hand side. You have your master volume control. You have the section here where you can set up your performances. And this knob is pretty cool because it's, it's touch and press. So you can turn and press it at the same time. So you can set up performances, eight of them, multiple banks. But the magic is the sounds, obviously. So. The instrument is divided, you're going to think about it almost in three or four sections. So the first section is the piano, the acoustic piano. So I'm going to turn it on by flipping the switch. Because the, the light turns on, now the piano is on. Great. So now you're able to choose from the different types of pianos. So this knob right here can select from four different types of um, genres of pianos or types of pianos. So for example, the first one is grand piano, next is the upright piano, next is the CP. So if I'm on the grand piano, this rocker switch, I can check the five different acoustic pianos. First one, for example, is the CFX. Next is the Imperial Bolsendorfer piano. Next is the, S, the famous S700 piano and so on and so forth. So it's that easy for you to choose the the appropriate piano that you want. So here's a quick demonstration of the difference of the pianos. So this is the CFX. This is the Bosendover Imperial. This is the S700. This is the digital piano. Very different as you can hear. Okay, so now let's say if I wanna hear some um, upright piano, I just turn the knob to the upright position. Now again, I have different variations of the upright piano, and so on and so forth. Um, you have a button here called split. So if I go back to the grand piano, it's playing throughout the keyboard because this light lights up for the left and the right. If I press it once, now it's on the left hand side of the split. If I press it again, now it's on the right hand of the split. If I press it a third time, the two LEDs turn on, that means it's for the entire range of the keyboard. Just below that is the volume control. So I can adjust the volume of the piano in real time. And then you have a tone control. So it's a one knob turn to adjust the tonality of the piano. Very useful to get a darker piano versus a brighter piano quickly. Last, you, have, you can turn on the damper resonance on and off. So everything is tactile, everything is on board ready to go. Um, also here you can, when you select for example some of the CPs, you can turn on the effect from a compressor, distortion, drive, or a chorus. It's that simple to turn things on and off. We're done with the piano section. Let's move to the e-piano section right here. And the red rocker kind of tells you what each one is. So again, the switch turns on the e-piano and it sounds something like this. So this is a Rhodes 78, this is a 75, in fact the display tells you what sound it is on the screen, so you don't have to guess, the screen will tell you exactly what it is. So same exact description that I, that I gave for the acoustic piano, the e-piano works the same exact way. This switch switches between the different types of e-pianos, for example Rhodes, Wordly, Clavinet and DX, and the rocker switch advances or changes the variation of that category. Next, you have the same split function that I described earlier. So when two lights are on, that means it's the whole keyboard. If the left light lights on, it means it's the left-hand side. If the right lights up, that means it's the right-hand side. And when both of them are on, it's both on. Same thing, you have a volume control. Same thing, you have a tonality here to change. Uh, so instead of a, so 
in the case of the e-piano, instead of having a uh, damper resonance, we have something called a drive. So here's what it sounds like. I'm going to try to play with one hand and explain. So the drive here now it's at zero. Sorry, I'm actually changed the tonality. There we go. So now it's here's a is that drive. So it's a drive. Oh, that's a big change. You already you can hear that right away. So that's a very useful function. You also have because of the electric pianos typically. In the old days, you would run them into stomp boxes for different types of effects. For example, you can have it go through a chorus or a flanger or a phaser. That's why we added an effects section specifically for the e-piano. And it's as simple as turning it on, choosing which effect out of the six. So for example, when you press the button repeatedly, it goes from chorus one, chorus two, flange, phaser one, phaser two, and so on. And you have the two controls to adjust the parameters of that effect. It's that simple. You also have a secondary effect. So you can have a touch wa, a pan, a tremolo, a compressor, and it has its own parameters. It's that simple. So you can see that we divide everything its own, own section. So let's turn off the piano. Third, you have the, what we call it, the sub voice. So now same thing with this knob, you choose, for example, right now it's on pads and strings. So here's an example of. So there's a pad, I can change the pad. I can change the type, now it's an organ. A different organs. It's that simple. Similarly, you have the split. I explained that twice already. I think you get it. So the split decides where that sound you want it to be. Um, you have the octave, obviously. I think that's. I think I mentioned that the octave. So when you press it twice, it's minus two octave. You press it, press it plus, it's minus one, and so on and so forth. Um, you also have a volume control and the tone for the sub, and you have the effects section. In this case, it's a, uh, you know, effects that kind of applies to those type of instruments right here. And you have an attack and release because for example, if I choose a strings patch, maybe I want to change that attack. You heard the second time the attack was much slower for nicer, smoother pads. So let's turn off that section and let me explain this effect section right here. Um, let me start actually with the, all the way to the right. This is my EQ section. I have the high, I have the low, and have the sweepable mid. It's that simple. You can turn it on and off to get a certain tone out of the instrument. Next to the left of that is your reverb. So the reverb is off, and I love these, these toggle switches because it's that simple to turn something on and off. So if I want to turn on the reverb, flip the switch on, choose basically between the depth and the time, and you can adjust the reverb like that. Last, you have a delay section. The delay section is actually pretty sophisticated because when you turn it on, you have the option of applying it to all three sounds at the same time with the same amount or, for example, you can choose the piano, have its own settings, then the e-piano have different settings and the sub have its own settings. And remember again, you can when those three lights are lit up, that means the delay will apply to all three sections at the same time uh, equally. So you have a two choice between analog and digital delay. It's that simple. So you turn on your instruments, now all three parts, you can choose what instruments you want, and then finally you can save it to uh, a live set. Uh, each bank has eight of those, so with the press of a button, you can choose different live sets that you create for your own performance. Um, as I mentioned, it's 88 keys. It's very, very lightweight, easy to carry, and very compact size. It has XLR outputs in the back, it has USB audio and MIDI as well from the USB port. And in the future releases of operating systems, we're actually going to be adding more sounds to this. So this is the first time in the CP world or digital piano or stage pianos that we're able to add more content to the instrument. So when the next release comes up, we might add different organs or different pianos directly as a part of the install for your user. Again, thank you so much for watching. This was a quick overview of the new CP uh, stage piano. Again, my name is Hiraj with Yamaha, and this is at Pitbulls. Please uh, call the guys at Pitbull Music, uh, Pitbull Audio, that is, and talk to these guys. They're awesome for any questions that you have. And um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you.